All right, so you've had a good opportunity now to hear about the wonderful history of this program, and um, I know almost all of you in the room. So as scientists and clinicians now, I know that you're thinking, well, how do you know that this really works? It's nice that you have great anecdotal evidence. That's what I'm here to do, is to now continue the UIC tradition and tell you about a little bit about our evaluation. It's ongoing, so I'm just going to present some of our preliminary results today. No research is done without help and support, so I want to start by acknowledging the UIC research team. Um, almost everybody's here in the audience, as well as the Abraham Lowe Self-Help System staff and board members who helped develop this project and continue to provide their support and assistance. I want to particularly acknowledge the last name there on the list, Kathy Garcia, who is a past director of the organization. She lost her battle with cancer a year ago, and uh, she was very instrumental in getting this evaluation underway. So I always, whenever I do this, I always say this is an honor of Kathy. Okay, so I'll tell you a little bit about our uh, evaluation. It is going on now into its final year, and our goals are a little bit about what Nancy talked about already. It's twofold. It's first of all to look at how is participating in RI meetings, the group meetings that were described to you, how is that helping people really cope with their daily life challenges, including their mental health symptoms, but then also to collect some very needed data on participation, satisfaction, what people themselves are saying about how it meets their needs. And then the ultimate goal is to begin to have that database that we can use to build a future more rigorous controlled study, which we all know is built on evidence-based um, in terms of eligibility criteria, what we did is we targeted newcomers, and newcomers is the term that RI uses to describe people who are new to the program who've attended one to five meetings. And we targeted this group in particular because we wanted to see how are they as they first start coming to RI and be able to track changes for outcomes over a year. Um, in terms of their participation, everybody participates in the evaluation for one year. We interview them over the phone at four assessment points when they first enroll into our evaluation, three months later, six months later, and then 12 months later. So our interview protocols assess the following domains, and these were domains that were chosen uh, by the evaluation staff, but also with Kathy Garcia and with the board and with staff to say, here's what we think helps, here's what we think we see as a result of participating in RI. So we're assessing mental health symptoms through the BSI. We're looking at empowerment, emotional well-being, so self-esteem and coping mastery ability. We're looking at some of the things that Phyllis and Marilyn talked about that the group does, hope, personal recovery, self-stigma, service needs and use. What else are you using? What else do you need in addition to RI? Social support, and then looking at meeting attendance, satisfaction. And in terms of knowledge, what we wanted to do and hope to do through this evaluation is to begin to look at relationships between what people are actually learning and using from RI and how is that applied to outcomes. So we asked some questions about some of the tools, some of the things that you were told about, uh, drop the judgment, and then also that four-part example. And I don't know, can one of you give an example of what a four-part example is? Because I talk about it again, I don't want to do it justice, so you're the experts. Do you want me to sure. Share? Okay. The first part is to describe an event that was upsetting. Describe an event that was upsetting to you. That's part one. And we say just tell it like a recorder would. Just the facts. That's it. Then the second part, which is the clue that you're in temper is to describe the feelings, sensations, thoughts, and impulses you had. And that lets you know that you're in temper. The third part is what tools you use that you have learned in the program to deal with the temper and not work it up. Then the fourth part of the example is to describe what would have happened before you were in the program, how you would have not dealt with the situation or how badly you would have dealt with it. And that way you can tell how far you've come. And then finally, in the fourth part, we say, endorse yourself for any effort you made to control your temper. 
And we always talk about self-endorsement, you know, giving ourselves a pat on the back for any effort we make to control our temper. Thank you. Okay, so just talk a little bit about how we reached out to people because, as you heard, our eyes going on across the country, so we didn't want to just select one part of the country. We opened it up to all groups across the country, we invited all of the RA group leaders to participate in the evaluation. And those who were interested participated in a conference call, um, usually a couple of conference calls with me. We talked about the goals of the study and just the basic procedures, which we kept very simple. We had an evaluation packet with different materials about what our study was about, what everybody was going to get themselves into, um, why we were doing the study, and then the group leaders handed them out to the newcomers in their group. People who read those packets, those information, they read a flyer, and then called our 800 number here at UIC. They were screened by an evaluation team member. People who said, yeah, I think this is great, and met the eligibility criteria, were then enrolled in the study. We sent informed consent documents out to them. Um, set up a time for their first interview, but we did not do that first interview until we got their consent documents, in case any IRP representatives are here. <laughs> no consent, and I can tell you, my staff are in the room, they will not, they're nodding their heads. If you did not have a consent form in the file drawer, we did not talk to you. Okay. Um, we were able to enroll a total of 126 newcomers from 97 groups nationwide. We only had two people that actually we later determined to be ineligible. We have completed all of our time one and time two interviews, so the initial interview and the three month follow up. Um, we've completed time one interviews with 114 subjects and time two interviews with 95 subjects. And our time three, the six month and 12 month interviews are ongoing and those data will be complete in December. December, yes. We have, we